Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And as you saw from the title of this tutorial, it's simply called Learning Avid's Media Composer Lesson Number One. We're going to start at lesson number one, this lesson, and we're going to work our way through to whatever lesson it takes. It could be lesson number 400, it could be lesson number 800, it could be lesson number 1500, but we're going to go through every single detail that you're going to need to know to get the most out of your using experience of Avid's Media Composer 6 and even Symphony 6. Now when I get into talking about things that are specific to Symphony, I'm going to mention that, but remember, pretty much 95% of everything that I'm going to show you in this tutorial series, even though I am using Symphony, is going to be applied inside of Avid's Media Composer 6 as well. Now what I'm also going to do in this tutorial series is we're going to actually flop back and forth between Symphony on the Mac and between Symphony on Windows because I want to make sure that each platform gets equal love. Even though the system works exactly the same, obviously working on a different platform is going to vary slightly because obviously people are accustomed to working on the Mac or people are accustomed to working on Windows. So I want to make sure that I include both groups in this series. Now we're going to start on the Mac and there's a reason that I'm going to want to start on the Mac. Now in this first lesson, we're not actually going to do any editing inside of Media Composer. I don't even think we're actually going to get into the editing interface of Media Composer because everything we're going to talk about is leading up to clicking that create new project button. Now the first big feature inside of Media Composer 6 is that it is a 64-bit application. Now what does that mean for all of you users out there? Well, you're going to get better performance and speed to handle all of those complex editing projects using the new 64-bit version of Media Composer and Symphony. But it also brings up another issue, especially for all of you Mac users out there. For all of you Windows users out there, most people already have the 64-bit version of Windows 7 installed, so you're going to be ready to go. But on the Mac, it works a little bit differently. We actually have two hurdles that we have to jump over. The first hurdle is obviously the operating system. Now, most people think to themselves, oh, well, I'm using Snow Leopard or I'm using Line, and you know what? That's a 64-bit operating system, so I'm all set to go. Nothing to worry about. Well, you know what? Yes, it's a 64-bit operating system, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your system is set up to run in 64-bit mode. And what's important to keep in mind is that if your hardware is not set up to run in 64-bit mode, you are not going to be able to run Media Composer 6 or Symphony 6. Now, how can you tell? Because that's obviously a very important factor. There's got to be a very easy way to tell. Well, believe it or not, there is an easy way to tell on the Mac. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to the Apple dropdown, and I'm going to come down to About This Mac. You're going to see we're going to be brought to the About This Mac screen, and what I'm going to do is simply say More Info. Now, for anyone that's new to Line, you're going to notice something a little bit different. We now have this very cool window that we can go through and say, well, tell me about the displays, tell me about the storage, tell me about the memory. But what we actually want to do is we want to come right back to the overview. And I'm going to come right down here to the system report. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the software section. Once I select software, you're going to see right here I have something that says 64-bit kernel and extensions. And right now it says yes. This means that not only is my OS a 64-bit OS, but my hardware is set into 64-bit mode. Now, what happens if this says no? Well, if you've already downloaded Media Composer 6 or Symphony 6, there's actually a little tool that you can use to attempt to force your system to load in 64-bit mode. And let me show you where that is. I'm simply going to navigate here over to the Lion hard drive. This is my main Mac hard drive. And what I'm going to do is navigate over to the Utilities, and right here I have the Avid Utilities, and you're going to see right down here at the bottom, you can see I've already gone in and done this, I actually have something called the Kernel Toggle, and I'm just going to double click there, and you can see, fairly straightforward, switch to 32-bit mode, switch to 64-bit mode. Now here's something that's actually very interesting, a quick little story here. I'm using a pretty, you know, a fairly old iMac, it's obviously at the time it was top of the line, 4 gigs of RAM, or to Duo, and in this case, when I was running Snow Leopard, I could not switch the system over to 64-bit mode. I was completely locked out, which made me a little bit worried when I was going to be upgrading to Lion. But the great thing is, is that once I actually upgraded to Lion, and I went in and I tried to switch the system over to 64-bit mode, it switched over, as you just saw. I think that if you're running Snow Leopard and you can only get it to boot into 32-bit mode, that you're out of luck, because that might not be the case. Now, the other way to get into 64-bit mode, if you haven't installed Media Composer 6 or Symphony 6, 
is to simply restart your computer and hold down 6 and 4 on the keyboard and see what happens when the computer boots up. Depending on how old your computer is, you might not actually be able to boot into 64-bit mode, and if you can't, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to run Media Composer 6 or Symphony 6. But like I said, in most cases, this is the easy way to restart into 64-bit mode. And because I am running in 64-bit mode right now, we're actually ready to get in and take a look at the very first step of getting ready to start editing inside of Media Composer, and that is the initial project selection window. So let's command tab into Avid Symphony, and here is the project selection window, and it looks fairly straightforward and fairly self-explanatory, but there are a few little bells and whistles that you're gonna need to understand before you get into working on your project. Now, one thing I wanna explain before we get too far into things is that something that's very important to keep in mind, especially for people coming from other non-linear editing applications, people think that when they come from an application like Final Cut Pro to work in Media Composer, that you're gonna be able to take any sort of, you know, file type, throw it into your timeline, work with it, you know, with the flexibility that you had inside of Final Cut Pro 7. Media Composer and Symphony do not work that way. You have to remember, Media Composer 6 and Symphony 6, in my opinion, are the standard that every other company that's created a nonlinear editing application has looked to to create what you've been working with. And Media Composer for the longest time was very rigid in how you are supposed to work. Even though they've opened up Media Composer in the last few years to make it really user friendly and really flexible in how it works, there still really is sort of a very one directional way that you're going to want to work and one directional way you're going to want to think when editing inside a Media Composer and Symphony. And it really starts with the project selection window. Now you're going to see right now, we're actually going to start down here at the opposed to starting at the top. We're going to get to the user profile in just a second, but I want to start by talking about obviously the most important part of Media Composer, and that is the project. Now you're going to see that we have three options down here as far as where these projects are located. You're going to see the very first option we have that's highlighted when you launch Media Composer 6 or Symphony 6 is the private setting. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, where would these projects be located? Well, you can actually see right up here at the top, this private projects are actually located inside of users, Kevin P. McAuliffe, documents, Avid projects. We also have the option of getting in and using shared projects located inside of users, shared, Avid Symphony, shared Avid projects, or where I always like to work is inside of external, located right now on my Jesse drive inside of volumes, Jesse, Avid projects. Now to create a project inside of Media Composer 6 or Symphony 6 is very simple. All we're going to do is simply click on new project. Now, in most cases, like I said, if you're coming from an application like Final Cut Pro, this part of the process is very similar to your easy setup, except inside of Media Composer 6 and Symphony 6, basically what you're defining is exactly what type of project you want to work in. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't bring in other file types and file formats into that project with different frame rates. This is how you're going to base everything. This Basically telling Media Composer 6 and Symphony 6, the bulk of the media that I'm going to be working with in this case is 720p23976. You'll see that I have a few other options here that are grayed out, except right now for stereoscopic. And I can come in and choose the different types of stereoscopic workflow that I might want to work with. But you're going to notice that the aspect ratio is grayed out. Why? Well, because 720p23976 is 16 by 9. There's really no option to that. The color space I'm working in is YRB709. No option with that as well. And the raster dimension over here is grayed out at 1280 by 720, even though we know that inside of 720p 23976, we can still work in 960 by 720. But we'll get to that in just a second. You're going to see that depending on the type of project settings that we set, I'm just going to come down to 1080p 23976, you're going to see that certain things are going to open up. Once I selected 1080p 23976, I can now actually get in and work in a different color space if I wanted to. I can come up, I can come down to 30i, you'll see this is a standard definition. I can now switch between 16x9 and 4x3. So the different boxes are going to open up depending on the type of project format you're going to be working in. Now for me, for this tutorial series, the bulk of the work that I'm going to be doing is in 720p 23976. And all I'm going to do is simply call this Learn Media Composer. I should actually call it Learn Media Composer in Symphony, but for right now we'll just call it Learn Media Composer and I'm simply going to say OK. You're going to see that a project has been created, and what I'm going to do is just navigate over here. I'm going to click on my desktop. I'm going to hit Command and N on the keyboard, and once I have my Explorer up, I'm simply going to come down to the Jesse drive, and let's just look by the list view. You'll see now that I have a folder called, appropriately enough, Avid Projects, and in here I have a folder or a project called, appropriately enough, like I just created, 
Learn MIDI Composer created today. Wow, very early in the morning, 12.20 a.m. So you'll see inside of here, this is where my project is located and where all of the bins that my media are going to be located if I ever need to find them. So let's just close that back up. I'm just going to come back to the project window because last but certainly not least, I'm going to want to create a user profile. Now something that's different inside a media composer in Symfony is an application like Final Cut Pro 7 is that in Final Cut Pro, the user was based on whoever was logged into the computer. A bit of an annoying and painful way to work. Sure, you could open up different keyboard settings, but at the end of the day, really if you wanted to have separate users, if I was a user and I was working in Final Cut Pro and someone else wanted to come in and sit down, ideally I'd log out of the system, they would log in as them, and then they would start working inside of Final Cut Pro 7. It doesn't work like that inside of Media Composer. You're going to see that in here, I can actually come in and create as many different user profiles as I might need on any given system. So if I have 12 editors at a facility that I'm working at, I'm going to have 12 different users in here. And I'm going to get in and show you how we can get in and actually borrow settings from different editors in a later tutorial. But right now, I'm just going to stick with the Kevin P. McAuliffe user because, well, that's me. And what we would do next is simply click on OK. But you know what? I think we've covered enough for lesson number one. That gets us up to actually creating the project. And in the next lesson, we're going to get in and we're going to talk about settings because those are the most important things that you're going to want to get in and make sure you have set properly before you start editing. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.